Okay, let's do consensus. on the friction lab. But let's go over what you did. Okay, so we wanted to answer this question, how does friction depend on the normal force? And what we did is we took a book and we dragged it across the table. Well, some of you did. Uh, half of you uh, measured the force it took before the, the book started moving. That is the maximum force of friction you got before it started moving. And that's called the static friction. And then uh, the rest of you, you pulled on it uh, and let it drag across the table at a constant velocity. That kind of friction is called kinetic friction. Then uh, because, you know, look, the static friction, force of friction, they're equal and opposite, right? Because there's no acceleration. Same is true here. Normal force and weight, they're equal and opposite. So when you measure the weight, you're really measuring the normal force. And so you, you, you measured normal force, you measured force of friction. When you graphed it, it should have been a straight line. With a straight line, you can write a mathematical model for it. And that's what I want to talk about right now. What is that mathematical model? So for groups one, two, three, and four, you did what's called static friction. And what you measured was the maximum possible force before it started to slip. Okay, so let's talk about static friction. Um, the mathematical model should have been the force of friction is equal to some number times the normal force. Because what was the y-intercept? When there was no normal force, there'd be no friction, would there? And so it's going to be zero. Now, group uh, one, what, what did, you, did you get a slope for your line? What did you get? 0.37. Now, what should the units be? What should the units be here for this number? What's that? Right. You, you can do it two ways. You can say 0.37 newtons of friction for every newton of normal force right well what is a newton per newton what happens to the newtons there they cancel out um, because and that makes sense because friction is measured in newtons and normal force is measured in newtons but you can also think of it as 0.37 newtons of friction for every newton of normal force that's one way of looking at what that number means group two what did you get for your slope 0.31. Group three, what'd you get? I think maybe you're doing you're doing the reciprocal. What did you get? 0.32. Okay. And group four, what did you get for your slope? 0.27. 0.27. Really? really? That's pretty low, but we'll go with it. Now, that's static friction. So let's figure out an average for this. Somebody with a calculator right now could go really fast, figure out what the average slope here was. What our class average was. Please hurry. We're recording this. 0.3175. I'll just call it 0.32. Okay, round it off to two significant figures. Now, this is about what the last period got. They got 0.33. So you got 0.32. That's pretty good agreement. This last digit is kind of a guess anyway. Now, uh, the other groups, you guys did what's called kinetic friction. That is, the book was sliding across the table when you measured the force of friction. So kinetic friction, let me zoom in a little bit. And the word kinetic in, in uh, physics means motion. 
Okay, so group five. What was this number in front of the normal force? What'd you get? 0.24. And you can think of that as newtons per newton. 0.24 newtons of friction for every newton of normal force. And then uh, group six, what'd you get? 0.34. You must have a very sticky table, but you know, that's not too bad. Okay, and then uh, group six, what'd you get? Or uh, seven, I mean? 0 0.22. 0 0.22, wow. Slippery. Okay, and then group eight. 0 0.23. 0.23, okay. This is actually working out pretty well. And then what'd you guys get? 0 0.28? 0 0.27. 0 0.27. Okay, so let's come up with a, an average. So, I don't know, it's like 0.25 or something like that, 0 0.26. 0 0.26. 0 0.26 times the normal force. Now, we're, we've got two different things going on here. We've got static friction, we've got kinetic friction. Um, if you have static friction, we're going to put a little S right here. So look, we've got a lot of subscripts here, right? It's force. What kind of force? It's friction force. What kind of friction force? Static friction. That is, the object is the, the two objects are not sliding with respect to each other. And here we have kinetic friction. Well, kinetic starts with a K, so we'll call that kinetic friction. We'll put a little subscript of a K right there. So this will be a K right here. Now this number that goes in front here, this, these numbers tell you how much friction you're going to get for how much normal force you've got. But they're dimensionless. I mean they're newtons per newton so the newton cancels out. When you have a, a number out in front of something that's just a number, it doesn't have any units with it anymore, it's dimensionless. We call that a coefficient. Remember in chemistry you had coefficients in front of your balanced equations and all they did was multiply how many of that chemical formula you had? Well this is the same thing, it's, it's a coefficient. So these numbers right here are called coefficients a friction. Now what the coefficient of friction is depends on the material. If you use like uh, the tire on your car versus dry asphalt, it has a very high coefficient of friction. You want a lot of friction with the road because you want to be able to grip that road. If you're braking, you want a lot of friction on your side. So that's about 0.8 usually. If it rains, that can go down to about 0.6. So that's why the roads are slick when they're wet. Um, your textbooks on the tabletops, well, if it's static friction, it's 0.32. And if it's kinetic friction, it's 0.26. That is, once you get moving, you're not going to have as much friction as uh, if, if, if it's stuck there. You ever notice that you, you're trying to push on something and then once you get it broken loose it's, it's a little bit easier to slide along the floor or something like that. That's what's going on here. Usually the coefficient of static friction is a little bit higher than the coefficient of kinetic friction and that's exactly what you got. So I'm very happy about that. You guys took good data. Good data. Now we have a symbol we have a, a symbol to represent the stickiness or how much friction you get of, uh, between surfaces. This coefficient of friction, we have a symbol for it. And it's a Greek letter mu. Mu. Now here's how you pronounce it, okay? In America, cats say meow. But in France, cats, cats say Mu. Okay? So just 
Imagine a cat meowing with a French accent, le mieux, okay, mieux. And it's, it's a Greek letter. I, I, I don't know why we use this symbol, it's just all, everybody does, all the textbooks have it. And it, has a, it starts off kind of like this, it's almost like a cursive U, with a little, you know, it's got a front on it. Now, we've got two different kinds of coefficients of friction though. We've got it for static, and we've got a coefficient of kinetic friction. And usually, static friction is a little bit greater than kinetic friction for a given material. Usually, you know, um, not always, but usually. Now, so now we can write an equation for uh, kinetic friction. Let's do kinetic friction first. The force of kinetic friction is equal to the kinetic coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now look how complicated this little formula is. It's got all these subscripts and stuff like that. But if you know the language that we're speaking here, this is really not all that complicated. The force of friction depends on the normal force. The more you press those surfaces together, the more friction you can have. How much friction you have depends on the stickiness of the substance. The greater this number is, the more friction you're going to get. Okay? That makes sense? And these objects are sliding. You should add this to your equation list. Make sure you understand it. Now this, for the equation for static friction is a little more complicated. The force of uh, friction that's static is going to be less than or equal to mu static times the normal force. And we say less than or equal because this is really, if you make this an equal sign right here, really what that is is that that's the maximum possible force of friction you get before it, it will start to slide, before you break that coefficient of uh, static friction and the object begins to slide. But it can be less. I mean, you can have friction that's, uh, static friction that's less than that maximum. So this is an inequality right here. So these are the mathematical models that we use to represent what's going on with friction. Um, here we're dealing with where the objects are sliding with respect to each other. And here we're dealing with uh, when the objects are not sliding. Okay? So that is it.